we're going to start, and the next talk is by Boris Galitsky, PhD uh, from Knowledge Trail, and he is going to present his talk about content generation using Open NLP. Hello. Uh, so this is a part of Open NLP project. Open NLP is a machine learning and natural language uh, processing tool. And this project is how to use this tool, how to use linguistic uh, processing to do machine writing, to generate content. And this is going to happen in two modes. It's uh, for humans to either use it as it is, if there are relatively low requirements to quality, or to uh, generate a body of content and then basically edit it. So motivation. Uh, today, uh, good uh, content comes from either, passion up, either people are really passionate about it or professional journalists. However, today demand for content, especially for search engine optimization, uh, for bringing traffic to a website is very high. So the idea of this tool uh, to satisfy a variety of commercial purposes from search engine optimization, marketing self -promo uh, to self-promotion. And uh, different businesses, different enterprises require content, high, qu uh, high quantity of content. However, still uh, there are no commercial content generation system available for broad use. So the idea is to do it uh, open source, uh, so to start uh, so that members of other open source uh, systems and also for end users uh, can use it. So we want to build, it has to be efficient, domain independent, generate content about anything. Creative idea is to help people with creative writing, interactive, should be, content should be editable. So Basically, it's 21st century. People shouldn't be typing by basically typing. People should, it's like a wizard, gain content from somewhere and then adjust for their purposes. And it has to produce a large volume of content. Volume is the key. Uh, quality and uh, effectiveness are not really essential. If, if you want to write something, what, something similar to Albert Einstein wrote, don't use it. So goals of the project are going to go through some examples. Uh, technology, the algorithm itself, natural language technology, uh, then this uh, special technology, uh, what do we do, linguistics uh, for the level of paragraphs. Uh, then we talk about applications and how to use it. So uh, technical innovation. We're going to use web mining. The idea is almost about everything today somehow is expressed on the web. So if we want to write on the topic, let's not reinvent the wheel and just get pieces from the web. Machine learning of parse trees. It turns out that if you use web mining, if you use a change in API to get content from the web, the key is relevance. Even Google is being results are not good enough, so we can just take uh, them, somehow combine and get something meaningful. So it has to be much more relevant uh, than search engines deliver today. Then we need uh, 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 somehow to generate discourse structure. We cannot just randomly get pieces of content on the topic and combine. So we need uh, the technology to uh, do, to somehow invent document level structure. So why open source? So today, search engines are information access gatekeepers. They control what their users will get. So search engines say, we are going to use, are we going to use automated agent to analyze content created by humans? So they very put a lot of efforts into distinguish between human content, I mean real content, and content created by bots. And the point of have this an open source Let's somehow resist it. Uh, let's have uh, Google and Bing have humans analyze our text created by machines. And the idea of open source, basically, 
So just uh, imagine everybody is using open source content generation and each web user uh, generates content on uh, favorite topics if that ha and put it somewhere. If that happens, uh, then today's technology of search engine will not be able to differentiate between genuine content and well, fake content created by the system. So basically they would, it would shift the role of information access a gatekeeper from search engines to people. Okay. So there's basically a Walmart uh, for content. And re real human content is uh, costly and slowly produced. If you can find a way to automate content creation, so that result is somewhat satisfactory for human content consumers and good enough to search engine, that basically that is uh, good enough. And today we know there's a lot of content farms, so if you don't really use technology and if you just try to do it on string level, creating original content, well, original in double, in quotes, uh, content. Today, search engine can do that. So basically, you have to use linguistic technology uh, to create content acceptable by search engines. Uh, the motivation for this work is how humans write. I'm, not, I'm talking about all kind of writing we have to do, uh, except stuff we are really interested in like student writing. I need to explore a topic, Lake Titicaca in Peru. I'm going to go to the web, I'm going to search for it, I'm going to get some search results, some search result I wouldn't like. From such result I will get PDF, some going to be HTML, I'm going to cut and paste in my document and then I'm going to edit. So all this except the last one can be automated. So this is uh, how we do writing. So doing final text polishing Depending on the requirements, uh, humans can still do users of the system. Or if requirements are not high, uh, then uh, users don't have to do. Okay, like imagine corporate environment. How many documents we wrote for hire really read? Not, definitely not 100%. Okay? So, and in a lot of cases, we know that we have to write it, but nobody ever is going to read it. For that application area, we don't, need, uh, we don't need human polishing. And the same goes for search engine optimization. It's all dynamic content. It will leave their life cycle for two weeks. It becomes something popular. We write it automatically. Nobody reads it. Uh, search engine picks it. And then we are good. Uh, let's uh, look at examples. Uh, so yesterday, let's say somebody tells me, like, you have five minutes. Can you prepare a presentation on salt cloud? Solar cloud. So yesterday I went to the lecture on solar cloud, and this, this is not my area, by the way, not, not the cloud part. So I uh, went uh, to the user interface of this system. I typed solar cloud. I have it emailed to my account address. Uh, also, I have some control over what size of document I want, and I wanted to make it uh, comprehensive. And this is what I uh, got in about uh, half an hour. So this is an 87-page document with images and descriptions for images, different types of architecture, discussion from different sources. And it turns out uh, this is a list of sources. So this is a lot. And it would probably take me a week to do it manually. Okay. So I'm not an expert in this area, but nevertheless, uh, using this technology, it takes basically this form. So maybe we still have uh, some time. How about you suggest me topic, uh, topic, sports, adventure, anything, and we're going to run it and see if it writes it by the end of the presentation. Like baseball player. Virginia Tech football, okay. Okay, I didn't misspell. Go, okay. Uh, 
so let's focus on technology. So obviously, the main, it's not the performance uh, which is an issue. Difficulty is relevant. This is an example of my communication with Western Union. So basically, what I'm showing, and this is for real, and what I am showing is that today we don't really have uh, conversational agents which do relevant stuff. So main thing is relevance. And rel uh, relevance in domain independent uh, way uh, can be done by uh, deep linguistic processing. We're going to get there. But let's start with overall view. Let's uh, quickly. So this is like high level view of the architecture, how we do and they're going to run uh, through the steps. Uh, what we do, we take few sentences, we split them in phrases, we form search so change in queries, we run search so change in queries, and then we navigate for each uh, snippet. We try to see if it's appropriate. We go to the web page, we use ticket to extract content. These are the steps then. Uh, step two, we do different relevance verification. Uh, so uh, syntactic match, instead of keywords, we're going to use uh, parse trees. And then also a special treatment uh, for the content, which is opinionated. Because if it's opinionated, it's usually more, it's usually play better part as a, for the future article. Then we calculate uh, relevance, and then we reject uh, some portions if uh, it's if it's from the page if it's something if it's not going to read well if it's sales speech if uh, if it's some kind of advertisement if it's not a real uh, natural language part and the last is uh, combine what we got uh, based on uh, the rhetoric structure based on the structure of discourse we generated uh, let's start with example we are writing about Albert Einstein invention we're going to use uh, being autocomplete, Albert Einstein invented. And then we have three options, space, atomic bomb, time machine. So this is going to be our rudimentary structure of the future document. Chapter one, Albert Einstein invented space. Chapter two, Albert Einstein invented atomic bomb. Uh, chapter three, time machine. So this is going to be our structure of the future document. And then we go into details. Uh, let's see how we do it. Uh, so in real life, I use uh, being so change in API, but this is uh, section structure. Space, boom. So this is, now we're not getting pieces of content. Now we're getting uh, the discourse structure, of the forming discourse structure of the future document using web mining. Uh, so now step uh, number two, invent in space. And then we get uh, these portions. So then we go to go to original documents, get paragraphs of text, reformulate them. And the last uh, step is the explain merging. Is the algorithm clear from the high level? OK, let's go a little bit more linguistic details. Uh, so this is how we, exp uh, how we uh, compute candidate to be included in the uh, future essay. We call it syntactic generalization. Uh, this is, instead of dealing with keywords, dealing with keywords are not good enough because it can be writing about Albert Einstein, can be Albert Einstein as a person, and Albert Einstein, College of Medicine, for example. Search so engine, not really good at differentiating that. But you have to, otherwise, the result and content going to be totally unreadable and irrelevant. So this is uh, the overlap between what we want and what we got as a candidate in terms of uh, the common part of parse tree. Uh, let, let's look at a uh, previous example. So if we, uh, this is a seed sentence. We want uh, to write about rational investor. Uh, this in red is a search query. We go to the web, uh, we get some sentence, uh, then we compute uh, syntactic similarity between what we want and what we got. And then see the similarity is a really crazy something, a rational something. Something means nouns are not uh, overlap, only adjective in common. 
And then we conclude, uh, score is relatively low, so this is not a good sentence. Then this phrase, this sentence is rejected. So I repeat, we do web mining, we get candidate sentences, and we already uh, have the overall discourse structure of the document. Uh, now we need to accept or reject each sentence. And we use uh, this linguistic technology, which is uh, I'm going to talk, to accept or reject candidate sentences. Again, idea, if you want to be relevant, you cannot stay with keywords. So in t instead of uh, keywords, you have to do, uh, do with parse trees. So let's uh, consider example. How do, uh, this is what we want to write about. Uh, this is the instance, the sentence we got from the web. How do we know that they're relevant to each other? These are parse trees. And the similarity is measured as how common, how similar to each other are parse trees. And similarity between trees is a maximal common subtree. So for these sentences, uh, what is shown here is a maximum common subtree. So uh, the statement here is to be relevant when we do web mining for content generation using keyword analysis, using something like TF-IDF keyword learning model is not good enough. Uh, so we need to uh, deal with parse trees instead of keywords. And now let's go deeper into that. I'm going to show the same work just for regular search. So I have this request uh, handler for solar, uh, which is, so I'm comparing default request handler and request handler which takes into account phrase structure, does learning of parse trees. Uh, let's look at examples. So the query is uh, Lady Gaga, uh, Lady Gaga sings, and then it's a very, very, very basic, very simple index with just a uh, few documents. And uh, default solar request handler, if you query is Lady Gaga sings, gives Lady Gaga does belly dance, but Katy Perry sings romance. See? So we have to, even in this simplest possible, one of the simplest possible index with just 10 documents, you need to do phrase structure so your uh, ranking is acceptable. Now, instead of uh, default solar request handler, we used uh, the syntactic generalization request handler. And now, the same query Lady Gaga sings gives Lady Gaga sings pop and Katy Perry performs punk rock. Okay? So even as, as simple as possible example, you need to do phrase matching via trees instead of keyword. And then you get relevant answers. Even in this, like, even in basically uh, default TF-IDF model gets lost even in, last, even in 10 documents. Okay, and as simple phrases. Okay, so now we're going to go deeper. What if we have not single sentences, but paragraphs? How we do assessment of uh, similarities between paragraphs? Then we have to do uh, models for the whole paragraph, not just single sentences. For the single, sentence, single sentences, there are generally accepted structure, parse trees. For paragraphs, we need to combine parse trees. And for this work, uh, we use a special model how we combine parse trees. Uh, let's look at example. Finding similarity between texts. Again, how to make search relevant. Simple approach, baseline approach. For this text, we just use keywords. You see not not really good enough. The next step, if you do compare sentence by sentence, uh, uh, calculate uh, parse trees. Uh, here, these phrases, uh, think of it as passes in common maximum subtrees. Or another way to look at it, just common phrases. We have part of speech word. If it's the same part of speech, but words are different, then it's star. Uh, so this is how you compute similarity uh, between uh, texts using sentence by sentence comparison. But we know that if we, have, we can have the same text, but information can be distributed differently between paragraphs, between sentences. What do we do? For that, uh, we uh, compare structures of paragraphs. For the same text, if we take into account a rhetoric structure of text and we take into account anaphora, then we get much richer Commonality. So we can be much more sensitive, in a sense, 
d how we uh, compute similarity between texts. Is first text relevant to the second or not? And this is essential for web mining. If you write about a topic, we have a seed, and we want to confirm that what we got on the web is actually about what we are looking for, we need to go to the level of paragraphs. So this is an example of a more complex structure. So these are individual parse trees, and we use red arcs to connect them. And then, to compute similarity between paragraphs, you have to find maximum common subgraph. And let me show, yeah, for this resolution, it's not really visible, when, uh, visible well, but you get the structure. So this is our first paragraph. Uh, this is our second paragraph. For each sentence, you have parse tree. And the area is green, is showing common uh, maximum uh, parts of a set of maximum common subtrees. So how big a green area is how similar uh, this text paragraph. This can be used as a score. Imagine we have a search engine and we have a really complicated queries, like I am abroad, do I have to pay penalty for not having uh, health insurance in connection to Obamacare? Really complicated questions Google cannot answer. So we need this technology to handle them if you cannot express question in one sentence. Uh, let's talk about applications now. So this technology is used, content generation technology is used, agent acting on behalf of a user posting messages to maintain friendship. Uh, this is a fun application. Like how many hours per week do you spend on Facebook? And how many friends? So if you have, on average, people have two, 300 friends. And if you're going to really maintain friendship, you have to spend a lot of time on Facebook. Does it really worth it? So uh, what you do, uh, you use this agent, uh, which uh, responds to messages of your friends. Not really like close friends, but like your former colleagues, a bit like larger community of uh, distant friends. Then you save time and then you impress them so they think that you care about them. So my friend, I worked a few years ago uh, somewhere. He's posting about uh, sunset of the Tach. It's not that really I worry about it much, but I just want him to think that like I, I maintain friendship and I don't want to spend my time. So I took his uh, posting, I went to the web, I mean this system, the same system which does content generation, and then it found something, the hike was round trip about eight, five miles and so forth. So then he thinks, okay, like, okay, so he went to Taha and I went to Taha. And he's now manager at Google, maybe I need him someday. So this way I don't spend time, but I maintain friendship. Another case study, my friends uh, posted a message they dance, they, about them dancing tanga. Uh, then I have my automated agent picking up keyword tanga and dancing, and then here's the wedding recommendations. My friends got upset, and this is a screenshot how he communicates with me. You know, use of your agent, you know, it's not always ethical. Like sometimes you make people upset. So what happens five months later, they actually got married. So I have a lot of experiments uh, with this agent, and I'm going to just uh, show the screenshot. If this uh, really like crazy tech, uh, tech guy, and he's talking about target search and report hackers stole pin, I use this form I used. I'm writing a something I say about hackers stole pin, and then I'm showing, you know, I really care about what you care about. And then I post it here. So this CASP is the agent name which does it uh, for me. And then uh, what actually happened, people complain, people unfriended me, people share negative information and encourage others to unfriend me. So there are different levels of unsatisfaction with this uh, software. And then this evaluation, how it happens. Basically in different domains, I uh, post messages in different domains and then I calculate how long, how much tolerance people have to that. So this is an evaluation of how it works. So you do lose uh, some friends, but overall, 
overall, uh, the impact is positive. So I lost some friends, but I didn't lose time, but I didn't <laughs> spend much time in it. For that purpose, I'm going to have open source. Yes? Uh, questions? Oh, sorry. I was saying eventually you can reach a point where you have a content generation automation on both sides of the conversation. Yes. Yeah. And for <laughs> that, I'm doing this as open source. Yes. <laughs> so let Facebook advertisement be seen by agents, OK? <laughs> Let's have an agent target of Facebook advertising. So, I don't, so for real friends, I will still talk on Facebook. But for the rest, I maintain friendship, and I don't want to see Facebook ads. OK. Uh, so there is some uh, work published on this area in linguistic. There is some interest with article in New Scientist about Facebook for lazy bones, uh, how people can use this technology, basically, to optimize how they maintain friends. Uh, just a little bit more overview of uh, this project and other open source project. So open NLP is a linguistic component. JGraphT is a graph component. And because we do machine learning of graphs for linguistics, machine learning, we do graph learning and make basic linguistic richer. Uh, for graph community, we give a good source, like unlimited source of graphs which for, I mean, there are unlimited number of texts on the web. So we give interesting data set for training. Also, uh, this open source contribution uh, uses Stanford NLP. So for different applications, uh, you can use both open NLP and Stanford NLP. I'm going to run quickly uh, through the code. Uh, so for the search, what you do with this solar like you're a search engineer and you want really quickly take advantage of linguistic features. You don't have to know about anything about parse trees, anything about linguistics. What you do, you just uh, download, get this request handler. You have to install the model. And then you use this uh, function call. This is your snippet. This is your search query. And then you have a linguistic score. And then it can overwrite your TF-IDF score. So this is the code you need to use to include it in your search engine if you do this request handler yourself. But for the request handler available, you don't even need to do coding. You put, as I showed in my uh, sample for the solar query, you just use a linguistically enabled solar request handler and see for your domain if your queries are long enough. So linguistic does matter. Uh, then this is. Uh, code for content generation. Uh, you basically take this jar, you call this function, and generate content about. That's it. And then uh, this is a functionality how you create a docx document. So your input is a topic, like what we just been writing about Virginia uh, football. And this is a code uh, which create docx. That's it. That's all you need to know. Uh, to generate Word documents, well, so where is the limit? The limit is uh, how many times you can do issue requests to Bing search API. If it's 5,000 per month and it's unlimited, but otherwise basically you have to pay to one or another search engine unless you find different search engine API, which is free. Like I'm using Bing and there is limit. Uh, just an example for this uh, open source contribution, uh, there is other uh, JUnit showing that, for, for example, for phrases which are very close and they're almost similar in terms of TF-IDF keyword analysis, they're totally different in terms, me, as you see, meaning is different. And this is extracted using a machine learning of parse trees. Uh, so the test for this contribution uh, shows why keywords are not good enough. So these are the links, should be visible on the demo. I'll go. It's basically if you search Google for relevance, machine learning parse trees. OK. Uh, what we can do now, see if. No, it's still being generated. Sorry, taking more time. OK. So I come back to this example and question for uh, time for the questions. Is there, is there a, excuse me. 
Um, I was just wondering if there was, uh, if you had any links of places that we could go and read more about this kind of technology. Okay, uh, so if you go to uh, Google Code, so start with this, it's all on PowerPoint, which is on the web. So this is the contribution on Google Code. This is also contribution of OpenNLP, basically the same code. And then you can down, uh, you have a code in JAR. Uh, JARs and articles, uh, articles on the topic. So basically, if you just go to Google, Google and search machine learning parse trees, uh, you'll get to the articles and to the code. So this is an article and this is a code. So the key, major keywords are machine learning parse trees. There is a link in the schedule on the website of ApacheCon. So again, and once you go to, uh, so this is a paper which explains the technology, but there's no access from here. Uh, however, on the code uh, downloads, uh, there are PDFs explaining the technology, training data sets, and the, obviously the code. Yeah, for example, this is a paper on taxonomies. Taxonomies for search engine, for example. Uh, let me show some more examples. Oh, this is a website where I experiment with search engine optimization. I publish uh, fake content, including fake reviews, and uh, observe how search, engine, search engines bring traffic. So you just give a task, create a review about whatever product, Alpine waterfall tabletop fountain, and then it writes, writes, publishes on the web. So you're making any money from these advertisements? Okay. <laughs> so I don't do it for myself. I don't do it. For, I don't do it for myself. I do it for companies. Okay. Uh, so including uh, so the two types of content: product content. Uh, product content that was a recent uh, project so basically what you can do you can go to Amazon you can pick up a couple of reviews so for, for non very popular products there are a couple of reviews on Amazon from couple of reviews you can generate hundred you can put on the website and then search engine will think oh you are the real source of like you like your users know what this pro, uh, product is so you should be high highly ranked uh, the other examples I'm going to show uh, that was done for that was done for eBay entertainment, like all these opinions about entertainment, entertainment recommendations. Again, if you just take an article somewhere, publish it, and you're not going to have a significant amount of views so because Google will know this is not original content. And this is published after it was originally published. So it's not yours. So it doesn't make sense to, bring, like, to rank you highly. However, if you do apply this algorithm, I explained better, you get uh, significant views. And this is the article about, like, so basically I did it for most popular events. You add keywords, location keywords, and performer keywords, and you generate a few pages article. And then also the mining for images and videos. Like this is a video. Take some time to load. Okay, we can meanwhile. So this is how. good stack. So this kind of text is generated about uh, how human would write about so Google didn't get upset but 
Google Chrome get upset about this fake content. Okay, so this example. Uh, I have a question. Uh, if this approach is similar to the approach used for generating scientific papers. Oh, okay, yeah. So for scientific papers, it's, uh, for scientific papers, it's all about the structure. They're totally meaningless. Okay? So for scientific, and, and by the way, for scientific papers, uh, a search engine also will not be able to differentiate, to, to recognize it as fake content purpose of uh, this work and uh, scientific paper generation, they don't use web mining. They just use syntactic structure. It's a little, it's a different algorithm. You don't get real content. You just take random keywords, but you know really well the structure of language, so you combine nouns, adjective, and verbs in a proper sequence. This approach is different. You actually get real data from the web, but you get it from hundreds and hundreds of sources, and then you combine in one place. It still is not as readable as content written by professional writers. But for example, if you uh, hire, basically if uh, writers for hire who are not very interested and who are not good English speakers, that's about, you get about the same quality. So can this be applied to other sources other than Google searches or Bing searches in your case? So like, for uh, example, you can uh, write, like for work, instead of using web, you can use all documents on your machine. Like for example, you, you do your work, and then your boss from one, time to time wants you to write reports about everything. So for that purpose, you don't need web, you need documents, you probably have something, you already have some documentation on your machine. So the same technology, just instead of uh, going to the web, uh, you go into your local machine index. But otherwise, the same thing. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to ask about. <laughs> Still writing about Virginia Tech. Check later. Okay. Oh, that was the question. Okay. Still writing. So the approach is to find uh, similar paragraphs on the web. Oh. So you have a topic, and then you want to find, you want to combine rich content on this topic. I'll repeat the algorithm. First, for this topic like Albert Einstein, you look for main entities, like what Albert Einstein invented. Albert Einstein invented, let's say, five things, then you have five sections in your paper, five chapters. Then for each chapter, you go to web <coughs> and search Albert Einstein invented relativity theory, and then you get content about this particular, spe this specific topic. And then from documents on the web, you combine what is relevant, and you also get images, videos. Uh, oh, what similarity is used then for? Ah, okay. So if you go to, to the web and search Google for not all of your documents is going to be appropriate. Like some of this, it's also going to be uh, low quality content. Some of them, similarity not to really, the query, not right? really. Some of them, not really about invention. Mm -hmm. Not really about. See, like this document, it's not about relativity theory. So what you need to do, and if you just use keywords, so our seed was Albert Einstein uh, theory of relativity. If you just uh, match. Keywords, first you don't know what to match. You don't know, you, do you match for the whole document or you only match for each sentence? If you match for each sentence, 
that you're going to have, your recall is going to be low. Because it's unlikely that each sentence will have all keywords. If you search the text, uh, your precision is going to be low because text may contain all these keywords, but it still uh, might not be about Albert. It may be Albert and Stein married, and then somebody else wrote about her of her relativity. See, so you do need a serious relevance assessment uh, to verify that this page is good for your content, for your future, basically for your content you're generating. Similarity between uh, your so query and your document. topic, your extended topic, like similarity between Albert Einstein invented theory of relativity and then your text, your page of text. So basically, like this, just this example uh, showed that if you just use keywords through text, not good enough. Accuracy is going to be too low. Thank you very much. Uh, and if we don't have any questions, then we're done.